In the previous video, we have finished implementing the binary space partitioning into our dungeon generator so that we can create some kind of rooms, uh, so split bigger area into separate rooms. Now, what we want to do is to connect those rooms using corridors and maybe even use random walk algorithm instead of uh, rectangular shaped rooms. I would like to create them in a more random fashion. We need to go to our room first dungeon and generator. Let's open it up in Visual Studio. Okay. So basic notion is that we are going to find out the rooms that are closest together. Starting from a random room, we are going to find one that is closest to it and connect their centers. Let me quickly explain what I mean. If we have our rooms, we can easily get their center points and find them all and place them in a list. If we have them, we can randomize, uh, we can randomly select one, for example this one, and we will want to connect it with the closest room to this one. And to connect them, we are going to match the X and Y coordinates by going either up or down and left or right. So those rooms will be connected with a straight line going up. Next, we are going to remove this uh, center point from the list. And we are going to remove this center point from the list. And we are going to find the closest point to this last center point. And if this is this room, we are going to simply go up and connect those two rooms. Now, let's say that this next room is the closest. We are going to remove this one from the list and we are going to go left in a straight line and downwards when we meet the uh, X coordinate of the center point to which we want to connect to. And we are going to go connecting those rooms in a straight lines and sometimes going left or right and up and down. And in this fashion, we are going to connect all those rooms and we, are, we will be sure that they are connected, that we can traverse from the start room to the end room uh, and there is a path between them. So we are going to create a code that will run in this fashion and connect those rooms together. So let's go back to our Visual Studio. Great. So first of all, we have called this create rooms method in our run procedural generation. We will need to have a separate list. So let's create list of vector to int. And this will be the list that stores the center positions of our rooms. So let's call it room centers equals new list of vector to int. And we are going to simply call for each tab tab to create this from the snippet var room in our room list, which is what we have received from our binary space partitioning. And we are going to call room center dot add. And we would like to add our room and it has dot center, which is the center position. But unfortunately it is a vector three. So what we will need to do is call vector three int dot round to int and in parentheses pass the room center. But our room centers is of type vector two int, not vector three int. So again, we are going to cast it so open parentheses before the vector three int dot round to int type vector two int and we are going to cast the vector three int to vector two int okay and now the squiggly red line should be gone now we are adding vector two int points to our room centers list now all we need to do is create another hash set that will be uh, of type vector two int and this will be the corridors. So this is why we have created rooms first and then we are creating the corridors. And let's set it to be equal to connect rooms. And let's pass here our room centers. We do not have this method, so alt enter on it and generate it. And all we will do is simply call our floor a hash set dot union with, and we are going to add to it our corridors so that we can spawn floor tiles for those corridors as well. Now, last thing that we will need to do is just implement, to implement this connect rooms method. In here, we will want to create the hash set that we will uh, return at some point. Let's create hash set. Let's call it corridors. 
equals new asset. Now we are going to call var current room center and let's set it to be equal to room centers and let's uh, type uh, square brackets inside those square bra brackets we are going to call random dot range we can right click on this random quick actions and select using random equals unity engine dot random now in the brackets for the range we are going to pass zero and room center uh, room centers dot count as the max value so this way we have selected a random room from our room centers so random room center now as i have previously mentioned we need to remove it from our room centers so room centers dot remove and we are going to pass the current room center and now we will need to loop while the current centers dot count is greater than zero so while tab and let's type room centers dot count is greater than zero if so we are going to select the vector 2 int let's call it closest so this will be the closest center and let's set it to be equal to find closest point 2 and we are going to pass here the current room center and of course the room centers a collection so that we can find the closest room we do not have this method so alt enter and generate it assuming that we have found this we are going to again call our room centers dot remove our closest point so we do not find it again and we are going to create a hash set of type vector to int new corridor equals and we will need another a method let's call it create corridor and we are going to pass here the current room center and the closest point at the end we are going to set the current room center to be equal to closest point and of course we will need to add this a new corridor to our corridors hash set so corridors dot union with and we are going to make a union with the new corridor hash set great since we do not have this create corridor method let's alt enter on it and generate it as well and at the end of our connect rooms we are going to simply return our corridors great all we are left with is to implement those two methods so let's create the find closest point first since this one is simpler we are going to create here a vector to int let's call it closest equals vector to int dot zero all we will want to and we will need to have a float length equals float dot max value and we are going to loop through each room center and find out the distance between the current room center and the uh, room center that we are checking and if the length is smaller than our max value we are going to set the new length as the length and the closest as the currently iterated center room now all we will want to do is call for each and we are going to look for each var position in our room centers collection or our list in this case and we are going to check float current length or maybe current distance equals our vector to dot distance and we're going to pass the position so this is the current uh, currently iterated over room center and we want to check the distance between it and the current room center and if the current distance is less than length so we want to find the closest point if this is less than length we can set our length to be equal to the current distance again we can use ctrl rr on the length and let's um, change it to distance so uh, distance equals current distance and the closest point equals the position that we are iterating over right now 
and we are going to iterate over each room center. If the distance between the current room center and the iterated center is uh, closest, we are going to set it as the closest point and return it at the end of this method. So we are simply finding the closest point to the current room center. Okay, this was the simpler method. Last method that we will need to create is this create corridor method. Here again, we are going to have to have a hash set that will define our corridor. So hash set of vector to int, let's call it corridor, equals new hash set. Now, we are going to set the var position equals our current room center. So this is the start position for our corridor. Next, we add it to our corridor. So corridor hash set add our position. And now, and now we want to travel in up or down direction or left and right direction until we reach our destination, so the closest point. So let's type while, tap tap to create it, while the position of our current point dot y is not equal to the closest position. So the closest is the destination. So let's maybe select the parameter closest in the create corridor method, control RR and rename it to destination. Okay, so if our current position is uh, y is not equal to destination dot y, we are going to check if our destination dot y is greater than position dot y, then we know that we need to go up. So position plus equal vector to int dot up. Otherwise, else we are going to check else if our destination dot y is less than position dot y. If it is so, we are going to add the position dot uh, position plus equals vector to int dot down since we want to go one step down. And at the end, we want to add to our corridor dot add the new position. Okay, great. Now, if we have reached the y parameter of the destination, we want to have another while loop. So while tab tab. And now we are going to check if our position dot x is not equal to the destination dot x. And if it is so, again, we are going to check if our uh, destination dot x is greater than position dot x. We are going to move to the right since we know that the destination is to the right from our current position. So position plus equals vector to int dot right. And else if our destination dot x is less than position dot x, we are going to add to it the position, the position plus equals vector to int dot left, since we want to move to the left, since our destination is to the left of our current position. And then at the end, again, we are going to add to the corridor, add our position. And if both of those conditions are met, or rather we are going to first go up or down until we reach the y value, and then we are going to go right or left to reach the x value, and at the end we are going to return a corridor that we have created. Okay, it was a lot of code that we have written right now, so it should all work, so let's save it, let's go back to Unity. Great! All we need to do is select our room first generation and generate our rooms. And if you have typed everything correctly, you can see that we have connected all the rooms using our method. In the next video, we will want to implement a way to generate those rooms using our random walk generation instead of putting those rectangular rooms in every room space. So see you in the next video.